This is Channel 5 News in the headlines. Calypsonians take a number as they line up to dethrone King Dice at the finals. A $2 million water project expected to bring relief to West Coast communities and President Charles Savre calls for a peaceful carnival while weighing in on the February 7 riot in Roseau. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details coming up. Welcome back to Channel 5 News. First time Calypso finalist Genius will open the Calypso finals competition on Saturday as nine Calypsonians try to dethrone King Dice. The Calypso finalists selected their numbers on Wednesday afternoon at the Calypso house. Following Genius will be Stefan, then Bob at number three, JD number four, Janae number five, and Daddy Chess will sing at number six. The Web at number seven, Dice comes in at number eight, Caressa number nine, and the only woman to win the Calypso Monarch, Tasha P, performs at number 10. We asked the reigning eight-time Calypso King Dice on Wednesday whether he is ever threatened by any Calypsonian, and this was his response. I, I decide that when I am in the, um, the finals, I concentrate on the Calypso vibes, I concentrate on, on myself, on my work, and um, I never see it as a competition. Now, threatened <clears throat> is a different thing. That's when you're taking other people into consideration and you're so in the competition vibes. But if you're on the mission, as long as I do my best for my fans and them, and they win or lose, they say, well, Dicey, come and they deliver and drop the thing nice, that would be my fears, uh, to not do my best. So um, as long as I can conquer that part, everything is good for them. You know, there are good songs out there too. Calypso looking nice. Saturday, I think, going to be a... Uh, uh, nice competition, you know, so other than that, everything is the same thing, you know, I take it the same way. More lead stories. Approximately 20 communities on the West Coast are set to benefit from an over two million U.S. dollar project. This as construction on eight water storage tanks is set to begin this month. This Northwest Coast water storage tank project falls under the country's Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project of the Ministry of Health and Environment. The project, as of course um, described to us by um, P.S. Blackmore, will produce the construction of eight water storage tanks and their supply lines within the communities of Mon Ratchet, MP, I see you need to smile for this one, so Coliho, Platma Pier in particular, Biosh, Picard, Glanvillia, Grange, Savant Pie and Cottage spanning the three parishes of St. Joseph, St. Peter, and St. John, and over 20 communities with a total population of 10,819 are said to be impacted positively from this project. That's one seventh of the total population of Dominica. This represents a total investment of EC $4,834,387.70. Construction of the eight water storage tanks will be done by Ace Engineering Limited, F and C construction and Stuco construction. The ministry responsible for water resource management has been mandated and so too is Dawesco to ensure that there is 100% pipe on water in all communities by June 2017. That means June of this year. And it's for this reason I'm very pleased to mention to you that the current level of, co of coverage at this point is at 98%. And when the Bells, Pen Rice, Layu Park, Sylvaner, and Despo systems are completed sometime in May of this year, or April of this year, rather, the national coverage will be at 99.5%. Meantime, the construction of these storage tanks on the West Coast will be a great relief to the residents there. Speaking to Channel 5 News earlier this month, Parliamentary Representative for the Salisbury Constituency, Honorable Hector John, described the water situation in Salisbury post-tropical storm Erica. Since Erica, um, we have not had um, proper water intake. We have a temporary intake in the heights of Salisbury and villagers um, on a daily basis go to um, get proper drinking water at Meru. And so that is a challenge for us. We want it to be um, addressed um, as soon as possible. The water intake for the Kulibistri Monrachet area had also been severely affected and was an area of concern 
for residents there. They were working on the access road to the water intake in the heights of Kulibistri uh, because we have a challenge in Monrachet as well. So we are hoping that will be addressed um, in the very near future and the people from Monrachet will have pipe bone water, regular um, pipe bone water at their homes. The five adult costume bands participating in this year's road parade have unanimously agreed not to file injunctions after the Band of the Year winner has been declared. Andrea Louis has more. The announcement from Deputy Chairperson of the Carnival Road Parade Committee, Charlene White Christian, on Wednesday. Last year, the Africulture Stilt Walkers had been awarded Adult Band of the Year, but an injunction filed by Thunderbirds Inc. and the Carnival Corner prevented the Stilt Walkers from receiving their prize. Those two bands had argued that the Stilt Walkers failed to meet the criteria to be awarded Band of the Year. At Wednesday's press conference, Christian said that the five bands participating in this year's adult costume bands all agreed that the judge's decision this year will be final. All bands agreed that the judge's decision this year will be final. It will be the final decision and that no injunctions or protests will be held after the results are announced because the participating bands they see it as their way of giving back to Dominica's culture and to providing a package for the enjoyment of Dominicans who would like to have fun. It's not a time of fighting. It's not a time to be upset with each other. The five bands participating in this year's adult costume band competition are Amnesia, For All Time's Sake, Africulture Stilt Walkers, Hysteria and Mercury. They have been asked to have stipulated numbers of adults in their bands, 50 adults, and they could have children as well, but they must have 50 adults in their bands. The bands have agreed to be ready to move out onto the route based in the order that they were placed. Yesterday, the bands were given a chance to dip a number for their order in the parade. It's something new that we are trying. Band number one will be for old time's sake. Band number two, hysteria. Number three, mercury. Number four, the Africulture stilt walkers. And number five, amnesia. There will be three judging platforms on the Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard and one roaming judge to assess the adult costume bands. The bands will be judged on the following. Visual impact. 30 points. Creativity and authenticity, 25 points. Clarity of theme, 15 points. Carnival spirit, 10 points. Originality, 10 points. Order and organization, patterns and images, 10 points for a total of 100 points. As a result of their dissatisfaction with the last year's results, Thunderbirds and the Carnival Corner will not be participating in this year's adult costume band competition. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. This is Channel 5 News. Coming up, musicians reminded of their duty to their young audiences. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. President Charles Savre has finally weighed in on the rioting and vandalism following UWP's protest action in the city on February 7. In an address released on Wednesday, the president called for a peaceful carnival while at the same time referencing what he called the lawlessness which followed the UWP protest. Thus, while one has a fundamental right to assemble and to exchange ideas, if such assembly involves the closure or blocking of any public road, restricting the free access of pedestrians and or vehicles, it is necessary to comply with the provisions of the Public Order Act Chapter 1501 and apply to the Chief of Police for permission. And in the granting of such permission, which should not be unreasonably withheld, the chief of police may impose such conditions as may be reasonably justifiable in the interest of public order, public health, 
public safety, etc. Outlining the conditions under which permission was granted, the president said only the courts can determine whether the terms and conditions were adhered to and whether the rioting and vandalism resulted from a failure to respect these conditions. That the United Workers Party meeting must end at 3 p.m. Two, that the provisions of the Litter and Noise Abatement Act are to be adhered to where applicable. Three, that the provisions of the Public Order Act, particularly sections 7, 5, and section 8, 1, and 2, are to be strictly complied with. That speakers at that meeting must refrain from making inflammatory statements to incite violence. Five, to ensure that the meeting is peaceful and adheres to the rule of law and order. And six, that the leaders and organizers of the meeting be responsible to ensure a peaceful meeting. His Excellency says other concerns such as the Citizenship by Investment Program, diplomatic passports, or the Dominica Maritime Registry can all be taken up in Parliament, the courts, or through other legitimate political action. The Minister for Tourism has reiterated his commitment to realizing the successful implementation of the Roseau Enhancement Project. Mr. Tong says the biggest challenge so far would be the utility companies whose power lines are above ground. Part of that project will ensure that all overhead power lines are placed underground. So you have these five companies and all of the utility companies, practically all of their lines are above. And part of the project is to ensure that all of the lines that you see above will be now placed underground. So you're going to have a beautiful landscape without all, without all these spaghetti wires all over the place. So for the last couple of weeks, we'll be meeting every, every Thursday to ensure that we can move this program forward so that in a very short period of time, we can, have, we can finalize designs. And the idea is to have a, what we call a, a utility corridor on one side of the street and preferably on the sidewalk. Because you know many times after you do the work in the, on the road, somebody comes back and they want to dig this area and that, dig that area and then it makes a, a mess. So the idea and the thinking right now is at least the utility corridor will be on the sidewalk area so that all the lines will be run specifically um, under that area. Um, more than likely the government will be the one who will have to deal with the, um, the duct work and also and duct work. And then the companies will now then come in and bring the lines on the ground and provide the provide the um, access to the various um, buildings. The intention is to have that aspect of the project begin this year. It is hoped that designs will be drawn and contracts will be signed in short order. The three streets to be targeted initially are Independence, King George the Fifth Street and Great George Street. These streets are also important for two reasons. One, they're the entrance and the exit um, from the city, but also very importantly for the issue of, the, of, of, of drainage and the discharge of water coming um, from the city, which normally goes all the way down to the bayfront. And whenever there's um, a lot of rain, you see the manhole covers popping up and you see all sorts of stuff coming out from there. Um, so we definitely have to address that. So that will also take that into consideration and remove the pressure on our, our water system going down to the um, to the bayfront. Aspects of the Roseau Enhancement Project started on the back road from Goodwill to the back of Financial Centre and to the link road to the gardens. And the UNICEF-funded Ministry of Education workshop has reminded players in the music industry about their responsibility to their younger audience. The activity was part of a child-friendly school initiative which looked at the influence of music on children. Acting Chief Education Officer Melina Fontaine says education authorities are seeking the support of all sectors of society in its mission to create safe school environments. With the child-friendly school, we are saying that we want 
children to be able to go to school within a supportive environment. But the environment is not just within the school compound. It is outside as well. It is at the home as well. And so we would want everybody to come on board. For us, we felt that it was important to bring the musicians, the songwriters, and um, the producers, the DJs, on board with us because we believe that they are a very influential group of persons. I mean, children hear their songs, they love their songs, they sing them at schools. We ask teachers to use their music to teach certain um, concepts in different subject areas and so on. So even sometimes without they realizing it, it, uh, they are a very influential group of persons in the lives of children and even sometimes more than the parents and the teachers themselves. Fontaine says musicians must understand that through their work, they also have to ensure that children are protected. One of the things that we look at is lyrical content. So um, they have the music, music itself on its own can stand alone and be okay. But according to lyrical, lyrical content, you will have a bad song and a good song. And you don't want the children to be involved in the bad song. You don't want songs that will smear the name of a young person and change their life forever. So you want um, whatever it is, whatever is being done, that it is positive and that the children can learn from it and become the kind of person that we want them to be. That's news. Kenny Williams is next with your sports highlights. In football, 44 players have been called to training for potential selection to the senior men's national team ahead of the Winwood Islands Senior Men's Tournament in May of this year. The Dominica Football Association's Public Relations Officer, Gerald George, has the list of players. The players are Kellison Thomas, Malcolm Joseph, Aldrin Lawrence, Eskim Williams, Jamie Parillo, Glenson Prince, Travis Joseph, Chad Bertrand, Euclid Bertrand, Rufuson Pielwi, Kimaya Strong, Marcellus Laf Raful, Hanif Gregor, Errol Blaise, Andres Joseph, Giles Mitchell, Montel James, Kasim Peltier, Rallison Pascal, Ajay Aroye, Eustace Marshall, Dion Laura, Sean Laron, Denzel Lawrence, Kimon John Baptist, Charles Philip, Scotty Philip, Jocelyn Prince, Sidney Lockhart, Rai Philip, Elvis Durand, Derrickson McDonald, Fitz Jolly, Delroy Parker, Joel Prince, Romario Buggins, Vernon Joseph, Christophe Jovier, Randolph Peltier, Hubert Prince, Kelrick Walters, Dalton Bannis, Delbert Daly, and Sean Daly. The players are expected to attend a meeting on Thursday, March 2 at 5 p.m. at the Football House. Meantime, in the Division I League on Thursday, MV Max and Obamas will battle Skerritt Northeast at Benjamins Park, while at Poirier Playing Field, it will be Police Sports Club versus Andy Williams Spartans. And Newtown Savannah will be the grounds for the St. Mary's Cooperative Credit Union Delta United versus Malta Carib Bath Estate encounter. All games begin at 6 p.m. Moving on to basketball, where Dominica Grammar School and Portsmouth Secondary benefited from home advantage as action continued in the Sports Division Secondary School's basketball champs on Tuesday. At the Grammar School hard court, the DGS team showed total dominance by defeating Pierre Charles Secondary 81-6 on home court. For DGS, Janae Serafine had a match-winning performance of 29 points, 9 rebounds and 8 steals. She was assisted by Janice Hamilton, who had 18 points, 5 rebounds and 4 steals and Desra Clark, 18 points, 5 rebounds and 3 steals. For PCSS, Marion Henry had 4 points and 6 rebounds. Elsewhere, Portsmouth Secondary was locked in battle with Isaiah Thomas Secondary and defeated the visitors 37-18. Kaylee Clark was the star for PSS with 21 points, while Naisha Joseph got 8 for ITSS. 
On to international cricket, we can tell you that New Zealand bested South Africa by six runs in the second one-day international on Wednesday. The Zealanders took first knock and reached 289 for four. Ross Taylor scored an unbeaten century with 102 not out. Kane Williamson supported with 69. Set 290 for victory, South Africa resisted with 283 for nine in 50 overs. Quinton de Kock added 57 and Dwayne Petorius 50. With this win, the five-match series is tied one all. Meantime, in the Australia vs Sri Lanka T20 encounter, the Aussies won the match by 41 runs. The winners took first to knock and reached 187 for six. Michael Klinger had a game high of 62, while Aaron Finch chipped in with 53. In reply, Sri Lanka was bowled out for 146 in 18 overs, with the highest score by a Sri Lankan batsman being 37. Despite this win for Australia, Sri Lanka won the three-match series 2-1. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. We now join our friends at the Met Office for the weather report. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carrett Joseph. The Atlantic high pressure system re established itself across the area, resulting in a relatively dry atmosphere across the region. Visible satellite imagery showed generally fair weather conditions over Dominica this afternoon, and fair conditions were experienced over Dominica throughout the course of the day. Radar imagery indicated minimal shower activity over the Lesser Antilles this afternoon. Conditions for tonight fear to partly cloudy skies with only a few brief isolated showers. Tomorrow, similar weather conditions, winds are expected to be light and variable. Sea conditions slight to moderate in open water with waves up to seven feet small craft operators and the sea bathers, especially on the west coast, you are advised to continue to exercise caution. Taking a look at conditions into the weekend, fear to part the cloudy skies with a few brief isolated showers. Across the region tomorrow, fear to part the cloudy skies with a few scattered showers can be expected throughout the lesser Antilles. On the international scene, cloudy skies in New York, partly cloudy skies in Miami, cloudy skies with some rain in London, partly cloudy skies with some showers in Caracas, and cloudy skies in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.26 a.m. and set at 6.12 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Calypsonians take a number as they line up to dethrone King Dice at the finals. A $2 million water project expected to bring relief to West Coast communities, and President Charles Savre calls for a peaceful carnival while weighing in on the February 7 riot in Roseau. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Idona John Baptist, and to our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow. <laughs>